Hello everyone, and welcome, welcome back, I should say, to CK2, Crusader Kings 2, of course, welcome back, because I have played CK2 many times on the channel now, and to be honest with you, I don't think I'd ever play it again when CK3 came out, but here we are, here we are, back again, because I'm playing, as you can clearly see here, a Game of Thrones mod. My, 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 my kind of interest in the Game of Thrones world was rekindled anew with the recently released prequel series, A House of the Dragon. And therefore, that got the taste buds going. That uh, got my interest going. I was like, you know what? CK3 isn't hitting the right spots at the moment. So... And there's no Game of Thrones mod for it anyway, although I've just seen a trailer uh, a couple of days ago for it. But, uh, yeah. So, CK2, a Game of Thrones, political intrigue, assassination attempts, plots, schemes, intrigues, people vying for positions of power. Match made in heaven. So here I am, looking forward to uh, plying my trade in the world of Westeros now, rather than England or wherever else we've played in the past. <laughs> Mainly England. Mainly Catholics. But anyway, so here we are. Right, so you can see this video is only quite short, less than 20 minutes, but if it's a video, if it's like a video update, it'll be 35. But, you know, I'm going to try and keep it relatively short-ish because this is a bit of an amuse bouche for you. Something a bit small to get the juices flowing before the main course, which is coming tomorrow. The very first gameplay session will be on stream, live, hopefully with you guys, to keep me entertained as we discover the world together tomorrow for a good three to four hours. But before that, I thought I'd give you the unveiling of who the hell we're playing as when we boot this up tomorrow, around about 7 p.m. GMT. So let's go through. Who are we? But before we do that, word of warning first. This game is Game of Thrones. I don't know if you've noticed, but this game is Game of Thrones. And we're playing in a timestamp first reveal. The most eagle-eyed among you would already know which timestamp we're playing as if you're au okay fait with your dates. We're playing a Robert's Rebellion timestamp. Oh yes. A little bit about why in a second, but before we get to why, word of warning, serious, serious face. This is Game of Thrones. The books have been out for a long time. The series has been and gone. That was finished a while ago now. We can't tread on eggshells forever. So there will be, there will be, because I'll be promoting the conversation around the books and the TV series. So if you don't want to be spoiled because you're reading the books currently or you're planning on watching the shows or for whatever reason you're watching the shows just right now, this might not be the playthrough for you because it will contain spoilers. So that's your first word of warning. There's lots of characters in this that will be familiar. There will be characters that aren't familiar. There will be characters that I don't even know about. How they interacted with characters that we do know about, and I want to encourage that kind of conversation because it'll be about, about a lot of knowledgeable people. Knowledgeable people will be watching, and it'll be interesting to hear about some of the histories of some of these people and etc. Such as John Connington, for example. Who's John Connington? You say? Well, he's currently somewhere around about here. He might be here, in fact. No, he's somewhere nearby. Not a, not a person in the in the shows, by the way, but in the books, quite a pivotal character. But anyway, so yes, there will be spoilers, so word of warning. On the flip side to that, just to confuse matters, I, and I'm sure many others, aren't experts in the history of the Game of Thrones world. I may not have watched or read, rather, the, uh, the book that the current prequel series, House of Dragon, is based on. So any spoilers about times before this and directly related to the house of dragon series the you know the the um dance of dance of the dragons pit time period was that the name was that the name of that was that the name of the book of the game 
Uh, you, you know what I'm getting at. Anything to do with House of Dragons, the Targaryens, in that timestamp period, any of the rebellions, anything that happened that's going to be in the shows or potentially could be in the shows, that, however, is spoiler territory. Because I don't know about it, and I want to see it live for the first time on the TV series in the next years that come that, 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 that this, the show comes out. So please don't spoil that particular timestamp. And I have turned on the option in this game to prevent House of Dragon spoilers, because it was an option. So yeah, spoilers, post Robert's Rebellion, perfectly fine. Spoilers pre-Robert's Rebellion, perhaps stay away from. So there's your words of warning, people. And mods, when you're watching this on a stream and whatnot, I just encourage you to be extra vigilant. Okay. Right, okay, so let's forget about that and let's dive in to who we've picked, what we've picked, blah, blah, blah. So timestamp, Robert's Rebellion, why? Well, previous timestamps, Dance of Dragons, Blackfire Rebellions, could be spoiler territory for the show, so for the current show series. So I was like, nah, stay away from them. Robert's Rebellion, it's close enough to the book, it's timestamps, the show timestamps, to enable us to have some of the characters present. Tywin Lannister, uh, Ned Stark, you know, uh, Robert Baratheon, you know. There's not all characters are born yet, but some of the, from the from the series. But uh, there are there are quite a lot that are still going to be very familiar to us. Hit the familiarity with me, as you well know, Shelley, is always good. So it was close enough to be familiar, but also because I want to compare and contrast what happened in the game, in the shows and on the TV and the books to what's going to happen here. I want to see how the histories divert because that'll be quite fun. Well, that didn't happen. Look what he's just gone and done. Um, so that was quite interesting. But also because it's it's the major incident that happens kind of before the, 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 the books and the shows uh, and how Robert became king. He's not guaranteed to become king in this. So the rebellion could fail uh, depending on the random number generator gods. So we might get a completely divergent history. If the Targaryens win, that will be very interesting indeed to see how things differ. So, that's why I picked this timestamp. I think it's going to be very interesting. So that's the first thing. So the second thing is, who's my character and where is he based? Well, where's he based? North didn't want to go there too, for too familiar. I could already see Shelley looking down upon me saying, oh for God's sake. Because the North is like Yorkshire, basically. Hence... I would pick there if I was playing myself, but I'm like, nope, gotta be different. Gotta be different. No North, no Starks here. Vale kind of put me off. Lysa Aaron, Robert Aaron. I'm like, nah, nah, not a big fan. Although um, the hand of the king who died at the start of the game series, uh, John Aaron. Uh, is currently in charge. Remember the guy with the big pebbles on his eyes, first episode? Han yeah, that's him. Still alive right now. Um, so, but yeah, it put me off being there. Uh, I just I didn't like them characters. Uh, Trident, middle of the map. I was like, eh, slap bang in the middle. Could be a mismatch of incidents, which could be a good thing, but I wasn't over keen. Wasn't over keen on that myself. I did think to myself also that you're looking at... Um, the, the Westerlands here, but again, it's like, uh, not, not a big fan of Lannisters, really. So I did talk, I did kind of talk with the idea of creating a character, putting him in the Westerlands and having him try, and having the house try to incite rebellion. You know, Reigns of Castamere and all that. Could, could we be the next? Could we be the next family wiped out? But hey, um, it would have been quite interesting to try to take down the Lannisters from within, maybe. Um, that was potential, but I was like, no, do you know what? No, let's not go there. Um, Reach. Tyrells. Again, not really the biggest fans. A bit meh. So I was like, nah, Dawn. Nah, never been a big kind of Dawn. There's not a uh, very south-based, you know, not really get too involved in stuff. 
So, where? Where should I go? Well, that only left the Stormlands, really. And then I thought to myself, that's not a bad thing, actually, because Robert, Robert's Rebellion, he's the Lord Paramount of the Stormlands. Interesting. If he comes king, could also be interesting. Might stunt our growth if he keeps the Lord Paramount for himself, but hey, we'll get to that if it happens. Could be quite dangerous if he doesn't win, but we'll see. So, yeah, could be an interesting spot based on what's going on at the moment. So that's why I picked the Stormlands. And then I drilled down, where do I want to start in the Stormlands? And I saw Amberley. Now, the way my brain works is I like familiarity. I like to reference things that link to my life or link to my previous LPs with character names and stuff. And my very first Grand National winner when I was about 1920, in the early 2000s, was a horse called Amberley House, trained by the late Ginger McCain, who also trained Red Rum. So he had uh, a second uh, Grand National winner with Amberley House, who'd finished, I think, runner-up the year before, or a couple of years before, so it was a damn good horse. My dad loved the horse as well. So I saw Amberley, and I was like, Amberley House, cool. I'll go there. And then I drilled down even further and thought, actually, this is actually not a bad place at all. Firstly, because this is where you start in the Clash of Kings mod, the Mountain of Blade Warband. So I have a little bit of knowledge about the area. Uh, well, I know of it uh, from my escapades running around there in Mountain Blade Clash of Kings mod. But also because, yes, we start as a count, aka a lord. And I like to start from the bottom and work my way up with the family. So that's quite cool. But also because... Although the Lordship is here, the High Lordship hasn't yet been created. So, aka the Duchy title, the High Lordship title, hasn't been created. So we do have a little bit of scope for potential early expansion advancement, if we want it. So it seemed like a place that ticked all the boxes. Stormlands, Robert's Rebellion, Robert's the Lord Paramount, could lead to some issues there area with a name that's familiar and also which I thought would be quite interesting if it ever comes to pass is we are on the coast of the narrow sea right right a stone's throw away from the free cities of Essos here if we ever wanted to venture across maybe or maybe they might start doing something over here that could also provide some interesting uh, twists and turns too, being so close to Essos. So it kind of ticked all the right boxes and that's why I picked the Stormlands. So here we are. So that leaves us with our character then. Love the music. Love the music. I'm going to say the, the menu music is fantastic. The game map music, really digging it. And when it comes to game music, if you know me well enough by now, you know I'm a sucker for decent game music. And when I like the game music, I have even fonder memories of the game when I finished. So this is probably going to be no uh, exception. So for those of you that were at the Christmas party stream, we did pick the traits through random number generator on that stream. What were they, just to refresh ourselves? Brilliant steward that went hand in hand with shrewd. A falconer he has a pet boar, and he's a master seducer. Clearly one of the outdoors. Falconry, outdoors, probably likes a bit of hunting too. Boar, picked up from a hunt, killed the mother, took a cub. Is that the name for a boar? Child? Cub? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, raised it and hence pet boar. Bit further down the timestamp, the Stark boys come across uh, direwolves, don't they? Yeah? Who needs direwolves when well, you've got a boar? Eh? So, a pet boar, who has been called uh, Percy? Percy, because my favourite sweets, <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a child, were Percy pigs from Max and Spencer's. I don't think they taste as good as they used to do. Because they've taken all the E numbers out of them, probably. But um, <laughs> when I was a child, I loved Percy Pigs. So Percy, our wild boar, who follows us everywhere. To the toilet. To the dinner hall. 
So battle. Wherever we are, Percy is not too far away. And we love the little blighter. Love him to bits. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Loves the outdoors. Seducing. Best than outdoors too, right? Away from prying eyes. Yeah. Clearly. So, a man of the outdoors likes a bit of hunting, falconing, got a pet boar. No uh, p proper personality traits. So, we've got a little bit of a blank canvas. Is he nasty? Is he kind? Is he. What is he? Is he greedy? Time will tell, folks. So, we've got a nice little starter pack here, but a relatively blank canvas for how we want to play him. So, that's quite cool. I created his character, obviously, just giving. Uh, what's this colour hair? Burnt, burnt copper? Um, but yeah, here he is, good old Lord Eric, 32, stats were already, uh, traits were already done, I just bunched these up a couple of n notches to make them around 10, I think one was 9 and one was 8, and that was about 12 or 13, bunched it up to 15, just to give him a bit of stewardship, because I mean, brilliant steward and shrewd, it seemed a bit low at 12 and 30, so I thought a bit, a bit more. Uh, but other than that, everything else is pretty much as was the stats dictated, uh, the traits dictated. His age is 32. He should have been in his late 40s, but I used the uh, the ruler design unlocked to, to bring his age down a little bit. Um, I've also given him a little bit of extra health and a little bit of extra fertility because he's got no kids. And I don't want him to die before he gets kids. I don't want a game over situation to happen, so just for the early stages of the game, just giving him a, a chance to uh, not give us a game over situation. Uh, but other than that, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I I'm very happy with this character. And again, eagle-eyed amongst you, what's the name of this man's house? Top Cliff! Top Cliff, of course! House Top Cliff, because why the hell not? I've just finished playing a 250 hour epic saga in Pathfinder Kingmaker. I'm already missing Elquist and his endeavours. So, one way to keep the game close to our hearts as we progress onwards is to have a reminder. And that reminder is the name of our capital in Pathfinder Top Cliff. So, uh, Eric of House Top Cliff. Eric Top Cliff of House Top Cliff first of of the line so there you go folks there you go robert's rebellion in the stormlands lord of amberley eric friend of robert of house top cliff what is gonna happen i can't wait to find out because that's the beauty of this game you just don't know Whatever the game throws at us, we will roleplay it, and at times we will take a back seat as the game tells the story. I'm so looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, kind of ironic really, isn't it? Robert uh, is soon going to grow to uh, dislike balls, isn't he? In the canon timeline. <laughs> anyway. Right, I'm going to leave you with that snippet there, folks. Stream tomorrow, 7pm GMT. We're going to get this show on the road proper. Can't wait for it. Hopefully, I'll see you there. So until then, I'll see you soon.